right, you ready to talk about some shit? Yes! Yes! Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Talking Shit. Uh, <laughs> Your name's, name's Dan. <laughs> it is Dan. I'm so I'm too upset to talk. Okay. Well, my name's Joe. It is. So I don't really care. And um, yeah. What a uh, what are we doing today, Joe? Today, in episode six, mm -hmm. we are watching the Kissing Booth. One yep. and two. Fuck. This so... episode will be comprised of. Two parts. Two parts. Because there are two parts. There are the two different booth. films. Yes. Because because uh, I, I bet you were sat there thinking, well, at the end of Kissing Booth 1, you were probably thinking, well, <laughs> I mean, that was indubitably incredible. So how could they possibly top it off? And and, and yet they did. Hopefully. They made a fucking I, I'm second I'm so hopeful. I'm very... Look. All right. Let's, ex let's explain this properly. So right now... It is Wednesday the 25th of November. It is quarter to seven at night. And we have yet to have seen either of the Kissing Booth Netflix rom comedy films. Well, you've seen number one, haven't you? Well, here's I the thing. Seen either. Here's the thing. I saw Kissing Booth maybe two years ago, three years ago. It was with an ex-girlfriend. I don't remember which one, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, of course <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's only two it shouldn't be this hard but um so yeah the thing is like well you know when you're in a relationship you you watch a lot of shitty rom-coms to make the other party happy uh and they kind of all just blend into one so i have watched this i do remember the story not that there's much of a story <laughs> is, it, is it not extremely complex uh, well i mean the, the philosophical questions it brings up are very are not layers Oh, there's there's layers of clothing that gets taken off. Hey, oh, Ooh. teenagers are horny. So, uh, yeah. yeah. If I said hopefully, then it wouldn't really. So, uh, <laughs> sound that way, um, sure, man. Sure. So, I vaguely remember it. So it's going to be a first time for Joe. So what we're going to do is, uh, there's going to be a bit of a lit, tiny little bit of an intermission in a minute, uh, and we're going to go and watch the first Kissing Booth film. And as soon as the film is done, you're going to get our immediate reactions to the film. We'll talk for maybe 20 minutes or something about it. Uh, probably be upset. And then uh, and then we're going to go away for a day. We're going to sleep. We're going to try and recover from... Mentally reset. Mentally basically. reset. And then tomorrow we're going to come back on the Thursday and tackle the second film. And we will record the final like 40 minutes of just probably rage, let's be honest reflection on yeah. our sins and we're doing this mainly because joe pitched the idea to me and said it would be funny i just want to tear into some rom coms hopefully. yeah yeah i mean you know i just find them dumb it's just obviously the issue i have is that maybe we'll be full of energy and whatever after the first one and be like ha ha what a shitty film but when we've been forced to watch both of them forced by ourselves by the way this is self-inflicted <laughs> self harm <laughs> yeah. this is self harm this basically amounts to self harm mm -hmm. uh... we are not making lightly of self harm in any way yes. shape or form it is to be taken seriously Thank talking you. shit does not endorse self harm um, unless it's for comedy but basically <laughs> what yeah, so, uh, I'm sorry, I'm rambling right now. Um, yes, we are rambling. I'm, I think I'm trying to stall. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm trying to prevent you. Can't, you. you can't escape the inevitable. <laughs> so. I can't Let's just escape watch it. the impending doom. I just want to point out to people real quick before we start, if you have a listen to this sound, that is, that, that is a bowl full of M&Ms, and then beside it we have a uh, entire huge packet of gold bears and <clears throat> that is a bar of chocolate so the, the all three comfort foods to get me through this um, dan do you want to listen to my snacks yes yep so we're gonna watch the uh kissing booth films now that was a good joke man it was nothing <laughs> wait what wait 
<laughs> was that the joke? Wow! Oh my god! See, no, th- there wasn't one. I I thought the joke was that you were eating something inaudible. Oh <laughs> uh, yes. I didn't actually. I knew it was nothing. Um. So, uh, okay. <laughs> see, you thought you tricked me, but I tricked you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're, bro, we're already delusional. Oh my god! Well, how, 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 has this intro been like five minutes or like half an hour? I, I'm losing, <laughs> I'm losing sense of reality already. It's only been five minutes, and okay. Wait, no, I can't say the seconds because it'll change in the editing and it'll be a nightmare. Ugh! Oh my god! Right, let's just fucking let's stop dicking around and let's get mm. to what's really important: watching both Kissing Booth films. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to go watch the first Kissing Booth. Uh, for us, this is going to be like two hours of gap, but for you, it's going to be a mere like two or three seconds. Four, do four seconds. Four seconds, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Bye. You... Bye. In four seconds. Much, much, much later. What the fuck was that? I liked that film. It was so good. What the fuck was that? Bro, I forgot those film th- that type of film could even exist. What it's been so f- long that I've watched a uh, abysmal masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? Remember, folks oh, at home, I have seen this film before. Now I'm I did say I couldn't remember a lot of it, but as we were going, parts resurfaced in my head and I was like Wow, this is this is this is trash, you know what I mean? Like this oh, is okay. this is oh boy, this is terrible. And then it got worse. It <laughs> it, it it got worse. I just It's and so trash. <laughs> you know you know me, Joe, right? You know me. I'm a I'm yeah. a I'm a I'm a cheeky chappy. I, I you know, I make a I make some of the jokes that are, you know, <laughs> Ooh, a little bit of sometimes a little bit offensive. You're a but, uh, risque. I'm a bit, I'm a bit risque, if you will. If I was a woman and I yes. watched this film, I would be so pissed off. <laughs> what the fuck? It's this is like the most confusing. I cannot figure out if this film is sexist or not. It it definitely is sexist, but I. I don't know if there's a point to it. I doubt there is. <laughs> yeah, because what, what you were saying all through the film is that you're flip-flopping between characters mm. because at one point it seems that they're, like, in the wrong and or, like, the bad person and then the other, in, like, another way, they are, um... Yeah. They're they... pointed out to be, like, all good and... It doesn't make sense. There is, there is absolutely no consistency in this script at all i this is a t- this would be an amazing game of thrones script the guy who wrote this would be great at like early like season three or four game of thrones of political intrigue and who are we on the side of who do we like what are people's motivations <laughs> yeah, in a man. shitty little rom-com that's supposed to just entertain and be uh, you know light-hearted whatever there's a formula to these things that it fucking follows uh, to a t and it's really annoying there's like no nuance whatsoever but yeah. characters are so confusing. People just get mad for no reason. And then most of the time, people don't get mad enough at things that they should be mad about. <laughs> All right, you know what? This film does not deserve a fucking non-spoiler section. There is... I Every week, <clears throat> me and Joe have... Sc- not, not scream. Sorry, I'm getting mad. Every week, me and Joe have said, hey... Here's a great film. We're not going to spoil it at first, because watch it. Come on, guys. Watch it. We try and encourage you to watch these films. Don't fucking watch this film. Correct. Okay? Do not watch this piece of shit. I'm so angry. I don't... Uh, Should we say basically how it kicks off? So, yeah, hang on a second. We, We do have a bit of a recurring segment coming in where I simply say, Joe... What is this piece of shit about? Yeah, bro. Um, So, we've got Lee and... uh, What's her fucking name? (laughs) Her name's L. Yeah, Lee and L. Mm -hmm. Lee and L, they're born on the same day. They're best friends from birth. Their moms are also 
like best friends forever before be best FF. friends forever was a thing <laughs> a stupid Ooh. fucking lion yep um yep uh l's l's mom uh gets tragically uh ill she eventually dies you know of, so of life's... Un- undescribed disease yes just some kind of horrible disease we feel very sorry uh for what her. we're supposed to yes well you know um there was sad music the, the, <laughs> in the in the massive exposition dump, uh, the, the, the upbeat start. the upbeat music stopped and we <laughs> was shown um, L crying for a second and that yep. that serves as us. Yep, and sad music. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So it served its purpose. Um, so yeah, she has that going on with her. Yep, and um, so they they're best friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have a list uh, of rules. Yes, they have these rules that they best friends sort of like follow. Zombieland, but shit. Yes, um, it you know we we have rules, don't we, Dan? Yes, we do. As, Rule as number do one is every, don't uh... fucking watch this film. <laughs> Yeah, well, what's their rule number one? Rule, rule <laughs> oh, number one is something like only friends. You can only tell your best friend your birthday wish. Yeah, that was it. What? Oh, geez. Number that, one, that, I've just realised you're not supposed to. That's the most important to... rule. Yeah, you're not supposed to tell your birthday wish to anyone. So therefore, it's not supposed to come fucking true if you tell someone. Yeah, but um, so yeah, and then of course Lee, mm-hmm. Lee has this um older brother. Ooh. Yes. He's a bit of a Chad fella. He's a big, sexy boy. His name isn't Chad. It's actually Noah, but everyone calls him Flynn. They should have called him Chad. Yeah, Chad Flynn. Hi. <laughs> Chad Flynn. I, I, I ride a motorbike. I have, I have a, a leather jacket. And I, I kiss bitches. And I also, uh, I also uh, chew on toothpicks. <laughs> he does. When it, it's that's only not when even he a has joke. Look... He genuinely does. Yeah, that's only when he has to look cool at a family dinner. Yep. And give, uh, <sighs> give uh, Elle the the eyes because of course <laughs> Elle has a crush on him yep and that is basically since she was like young yep and that's the driving thing of the film is that one of the rules is no getting with anyone who your best friend's related to mm. I but think that's course... rule number 9 yeah which okay yes. I, I, I would like a recap on all the rules to be honest yeah remember when they said that they came up with these rules when they were 6 <laughs> so it's six. He was just like, "Don't fuck my brother." Yeah, imagine. Don't imagine fuck him. At the age of what no. are they? Six, seventeen. Seventeen, and he's eighteen. The older brother. Yeah, imagine at the age of seventeen, a six-year-old comes up to you and is constantly behind you, pulling on your coattails, <laughs> going, ah! telling, governing your life. Basically, you're living your life how a six-year-old would. I just want to say, doing? sorry, that notification was for Tetris, so it was important. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, <laughs> Tetris. Tetris sends me updates, Do you have people, updates, messaging on, you have people messaging you on Tetris? <laughs> They're trying to challenge me, bro. <laughs> They're trying to chat you up. Try and beat my high school. <laughs> They're like, how did you get so good? <laughs> well, you see, what I did was I played it the whole time during Kissing Booth. I actually oh didn't, God. okay? I focused on this piece of shit for content, so eat it up. Yeah. So, fuck this film, we're going into spoilers. This is the stupidest fucking rom-com I think I've ever seen in my life. Twilight is more engaging, is better written, better directed than this piece of shit, and that's saying something. The opening shot, the opening shot is the hospital uh, that the two uh, best friends are born in. It's from the outside, and it's a Dutch angle because if you're not talented at all and you just need to make something look a bit better, I don't know, slant it a bit. It's artistic. Uh, and I just it, I just saw point camera at babies to be honest, <laughs> but they have it at a Dutch angle and they zoom in to the hospital building, and then they zoom back out and then they zoom in again and then in really Yo. shitty CGI it says a Netflix film and I'm immediately you're just like who the fuck is making this I oh. I don't even want to dignify the person who directed this because. I would shame you so hard, and I feel I don't want to make this a personal attack on any creators. I know you're, in air quotes, just trying to do your best, but your best is shit. Um, did you say it was a boomer, or did you just? No, that's the that writer, up? and this is what oh. I want to. This is what I want to get in, into. I am sick. I am fucking sick 
of teenage, especially rom-coms, teen films being written slash directed by old white men who don't even know what Snapchat is and they're just like, I'm taking Snapchats. It's called a selfie. Yeah. It, it's not a Snapchat. You can, you can take a selfie in Snapchat, but you fucking, it's not called taking a Snapchat, yeah. you stupid prick. To, to be honest, I think that's why I say I forgot these type of films could exist because it feels just the same as those films that you'd watch when you were like 10 or 11. Straight like, to DVD. Maybe on the Disney, I don't know, Disney Channel or whatever. Mm. Like, uh, just like shit, TV movies. Like rom-coms. And it's just, uh, it probably is the same person who did one of those back in <laughs> the day. He's just copy and paste. That's, that's his speciality. The guy who wrote this... And is and also wrote the second is a forty eight year old white dude and I'm like <clears throat> yeah man. fucking hell like this is so du like they bothered to actually cast a young you said that the lead actress she was actually eighty when they filmed it uh yeah she's she's twenty one now yeah yeah so. but so so they hired an actual young person what I why would yeah that's, this... that's uh, yeah Let... that's another point I was thinking of. <sighs> some of the lines like do do these young actors not like question them i mean yeah. i guess you can't I guess, well they're young yeah, actors you, they're just thankful can't. for the break aren't they yeah but at the same time you're like come on bro like, if i was yeah uh one of the one of the quote-unquote popular girls she i wrote down a line and she goes maria uh maybe one mia. of them the that omg the girls the oh OMG it's mia girls. sorry not maria yeah. i think it was olivia mia and Gwyneth or some <laughs> shit. Gwyneth, but Gwyneth Paltrow just steaming a vagina. Yeah, yeah. And one of them said, give me your numerals. We should <laughs> death catch up. Yes, we should death catch up. This is, oh. this is 2018. Yeah, Boomer this was two ass. years ago. Do you remember saying death? Oh, we should death do that. Nobody... Did anyone ever say that? Ever? No, people say defo, like... Yeah, def I say defo. Yeah, yeah, like, that. that's an acceptable... Uh... Sla use of slang by us young spry lads <laughs> young spry lads <laughs> i mean the way we're getting angry about this it does seem like we're bitter old men but no we're just uh, we're just God socially... damn you and your rob cobs <laughs> we're just socially inadequate people um so we rant on this instead of going outside you can't go outside we're in lockdown <laughs> we baby are... how have you come to the conclusion we're socially inadequate <laughs> I don't know, it's just been so long since we've, you know, been able to go outside. <laughs> wow, I'm re-evaluating my existence. <laughs> this is what Kissing Booth has done to us. Oh. <laughs> I feel like I I feel like I've like taken like medicine that you shouldn't take in too large doses and it kind of fucks you up. Oh, cough syrup. Yeah, I feel like I've drank too much cough syrup. Some uh, some of the lean. Some cheeky paracetamol. Because mm. you see, paracetamol is very deceptive because it tastes so good. But then you keep drinking it, like, oh no, oh no, I'm now going I'm gonna to die. <laughs> Calpol. But what a way to go! What a way to live! So, <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into let's get into the problems of this film. There's so many problems. One, I don't care about these rich fucking high school <laughs> kids' problems. Especially in America, of all places. Like, why am I supposed to care that, oh my god, my my rich, I'm rich and my rich best friend has a really sexy brother that I want to get with, but there's a rule we made where I can't, so we have to sneak around and have lots of sneaky sex, which only makes it better and more, oh, dangerous, and I like it, oh, oh, and, oh, and everything pretty much works out for me in the end, and even when it doesn't, I get a fucking motorbike for free, oh, oh, the hardships, the fucking hardships, bro, hey man, you just love is universal. You just don't understand the, the language. <laughs> yeah, rich people deserve love too, guys. <laughs> Look, all I'm trying to say is it's impossible to care for these problems when they have so much money and they're so nonchalant about it. Like, he's just like, yeah, I got a Mustang, whatever. I got a Mustang. <laughs> I'm like, bro, you have a Mustang. Like, not a cheap, like a fucking, you got an expensive, nice Mustang and your biggest problem is that your best friend wants to sleep with your brother? Yeah, I mean, if these people were at all normal and dealt with their problems in a normal way, which I know you can't because it's a film, mm. but, you know, the, the, um, they would just have a chat, probably mull yeah. it over a bit, and uh, 
you know, it'd be a this could be, be solved a five over minute a short. It would be a see, five minute yeah. short film. See, if this was a if this if this was a British production directed by us, the way that we'd solve this is over tea and crumpets. We would solve this over yeah. tea and crumpets in about five minutes because we'd all be so happy by the tea and the crumpets and the melting butter in the middle and just the warmth and oh, the way it just melts in your mouth. Bro, how can you be upset? I'd be like, yeah, fuck my brother. Cool, these crumpets are amazing. You fucked your brother. I don't have a brother. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, yeah, as you were saying about dealing with problems, Joe, how, how do these people deal with problems? Um... They it's very realistic. Get into fights, run away, and cry. Yeah, that's what I was going to hear. They, no, every <laughs> single problem in this film is from all the characters. I know they're teenagers, but bro, when I was seventeen and eighteen, especially relationship-wise, bro, I, I, you're young, you're terrible at relationships. You know what I mean? Like, I had these problems. I never ran away and went Aah! and just ran as as fast as I could away hmm. from whatever. Like, that's not how people deal with problems and ah, oh, just everything in this film is dealt with crying from everybody from the from the women to the men they all just stand there and tear up and then run away and it's like nobody that's not how anyone reacts to there's like at the middle point of the film there's this really stupid fucking bit where like she they're see they're dating by now ellen noah the older brother they're dating and they're sneaking around and um lee like comes in after she fell over in the garage so she's got like a big a big like cut on the side of her cheek and the thing with this noah character is that the problem with this noah character is that he oh he's too aggressive and he gets into fights and she's like yo i'll only date you if you stop fighting and Durr. so the brother walks in and immediately goes oh, did you hit her and it's like fam yeah because <laughs> because we have this moment when they're talking to each other and um you know he's looking after her and she asks why do you get into those fights and then he responds with i don't know it's just how I'm wired. Yeah, it's how I'm wired. And, it, and and it's like it's like whoa 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 whoa. You does this guy have does this guy have a dark side? Is he dangerous? Right, like, you know do we what? Need to watch out. You know what? Let's just jump around. Let's just jump around. Let's yeah. go through a list of all the reasons why Noah is actually a fucking sociopath. So he um, tells all the guys in school that they can't date Elle, and if they go near her, he'll beat the shit out of them, which is meant to be seen as protective. But it's also, like, it's creepy because he isn't telling her how he feels. So, from her perspective, he's just some older brother figure. She's not, he's, they're not related, but, you know, he's like an older brother figure, like, that just will not let her go on dates and do whatever with guys and instead let her get stood up and not, without an explanation. It's so yeah. dumb. Even though she fancies him, but... And he fancies her. But um, she thinks he thinks of her <laughs> as, as a, li a little sister. But yes. then, obviously, when that's break broke break and fuck broke down, yeah, um, you know that's when all this shit happens. And while he has her believing that he sees her as a younger sister figure at a party where she strips off and like she's about to go skinny dipping, he like kind of stops her from you know doing something stupid and puts mm. her in a t-shirt in one of his t-shirts yeah. lets her sleep that one's in the fair. bed like no, no no that's fair like you know he's being nice he's like making sure yeah, nobody yeah. takes advantage of her she sleeps in his bed and he sleeps somewhere else that's very respectful but then afterwards when she's still under the impression that he sees her as a little sister figure he refuses to give her her shorts so she has to be in her underwear <laughs> and then when he throws her the underwear they fall on top of each other and, like, the curtain comes off and because she, she's wrapping in a curtain to, like, hide herself away. Yeah. And, and they then roll, he like, three times. <laughs> yeah, he purposefully rolls three times to trap them in and then she accidentally grabs his ding-dong and he goes... <laughs> <laughs> uh oh sorry. And then, once she gets out of that and they're like, ah, I touched a dick, lol. It's like, he then goes, oh, can I have my t-shirt back? She goes, oh, yeah, sure, like, takes it halfway off so her chebs are out. And he, Shebbers. <laughs> and, he, and he goes, I was only joking, lol, but look at your boobs! <laughs> nice. And it's like, it's like, bro, you can't act like this and have her think you see her as a little sister. That's weird. Yeah, bro. I mean, I guess he's, he's probably, to be fair, he was probably just saying that from the start to be like, yo, this would be weird. Like, to, you know, because he doesn't want to come on to her first. 
I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But whatever. Whatever. It's so look, it's just I think this is one of this is one of the reasons why you're saying um like you're not sure how to feel about mm. the Noah Noah maybe more because like on one hand he's like this nice um, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I was gonna go positive first. <laughs> <laughs> Focus on the positive, yes. Yeah. Um this nice guy who like sticks up for this uh you know, his sister figure. That keeps getting herself into even though he really promiscuous situations on purpose. And yeah. she gets mad that he's trying to stop her from stripping off in a boy's locker room full of giant fucking te- horny teenagers that could do anything to her. Yeah, gosh, what a bad guy. Yeah. I think, if I'm remembering correctly, the only times he's, like, a sociopath is, like, when he's by, like, only with her. But then the times that he's good, it's, like, in front of a crowd of people, and then we're paint. He's painted by the crowd as the bad person, even though he's yeah. actually being good. Like, like when, um... Uh, if you if you want to talk about um, the when first. that guy was grabbing, yes. So actually, yeah. yeah do, do do the top and bloke first. Yes. So at the start of the film, it's like, oh my god, I'm suddenly a woman now. I have boobs and ass, and I'm allowed to say these things because she was 18 when she filmed it. Okay, guys, she was 18 when she filmed it, so this is all okay to talk about. Yeah. She, she has to wear the mini skirt. Yes, so her um, trousers get ripped because, oh my god, I have an ass now, whoops. So she has to wear this skirt from, like, grade nine, whenever the fuck that is. I don't know, I'm not American. Yeah, fuck Americans. And, <laughs> and, I'm joking. <laughs> and she goes into school and, like, her ass is on show, pretty much. And this guy, this huge, like, Jacked fucking... out of his mind. Yeah, guy slaps her on the ass. Yeah, classic and it's like, jock bloke. Yeah, and it's like, bro, that that is that is sexual assault, like, you know what I mean? That's like, like obviously it's not. Uh, when I say sexual assault, I don't mean obviously rape, but I mean like it's that's you know that's a sexual act of aggression towards her that she was unwarranted. You know what I mean? She didn't want that. And afterwards, mm. she's pissed off about it. So the Lee guy, the her best friend, is like, "Yo, what the fuck?" And he tries to fight him, and obviously he can't because lol, he's the skinny one who can't fight. <laughs> and then Noah steps in and rightfully beats the shit out of this guy. And then afterwards, he's made out to be the bad guy as like, Oh, you shouldn't have fought, bro. And then even after that, in detention, because she has to go to detention for basically dressing like a slut. They're like, yeah, well, you know, it's your fault, kind of. Which is, again, this whole sexist thing of like, what the fuck? Because one minute the film's saying, he may, like Noah makes a sexist regard about like, Hey, you were kind of asking for it wearing that thing. And she's like, what the fuck? And it's like, okay, so the film, okay, it's seeing that that's a bad thing. But then she kind of laughs and it turns into flirting. And you're like, well, no, that, ooh. And then in the detention, the guy- You've just undercut the message. Yeah. Completely. In detention, the guy that slapped her ass, what does he do, Joe? He he starts a note passing, a series of notes (laughs) um, between this middle guy who we sadly don't get to hear from. Yeah. Um, And his first note is on a ragged piece of paper and he's in all like, marker I'm saying, sorry. I'm sorry. And then she's all like, oh, he's like, oh, can I get your number? And what would it take? And then... And by the way, in. this whole time, she's not disgusted. She's like laughing like, Hoo-hoo. Yeah, like looking back, laughing. And then he he basically comes in like in a, in a skirt. Yeah, in that skirt. She says, yeah, if you wear the skirt, I'll give you my number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... And then blah blah blah. He gets his he gets a number, and then she's like she's talking with Lee, her best friend. And she's like, "Yo, I should go on the date." Yeah, and she's also like, "How how could I say no with such a great apology?" Yeah, and Lee as well is like, "Yeah, you should you should you should go out with him." Yeah, you should. The guy that slapped you on this. Am I in, am I in a reverse town? Is this secretly an episode of X Files? Yeah, where ev- everything's upside down. A- the guy that was about to beat up Lee as well. Yes, like, the guy. Yeah, he was gonna. Yeah, he was yeah. gonna. If he got in a fight, you would have beat the shit out of him. Yeah, and like, like Lee yeah, you threw, should date him. <laughs> Lee throws a punch and then Tuppen this this guy. You got the number. He 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 catches he catches his <laughs> catches fist, fist as if as if it's like Avengers Infinity War or some shit. <laughs> and he's gonna break his hand. Like he's Thanos and oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Reality can be whatever I want it to be. <laughs> I can slap women on the ass and then just fucking get their numbers, apparently, by just wearing this... Yeah, that's it's, his infinity it, stuff. This, this film is, like, it's impossible to read. I, I don't understand. Yeah. And but then... I- I think bro, we, we she, keep this forgetting... is the first instance of like because then she goes on the date and obviously he gets stood up and he's like yo yeah, yeah. it's because you know Noah is telling everybody not to go out with you but then literally this is five minutes after Lee was like yeah you should go on a date with him he, go, he literally says fuck I don't know why I told you to do that that was some bad advice it's literally that episode of How I Met Your Mother you know where Lily is like hey, you should do this. And then five minutes later, they, they joke about how she goes, well, that was some bad advice. Except yeah. that was self-aware. This is the <laughs> script, literally, like the screenwriter just going, this 48-year-old man going, well, I need a way to show that Noah's been too protective. So she needs to go yeah. out on a date. And the only person she's had an interaction with is the guy that I had to slap her on the ass and it all turned out okay. So what I'll do is I'll have all the characters encourage her to go on the date and then I'll make that guy out to be a top guy for the rest of the film. Hmm. You d- it's like you've got points that you need to fulfill in this romantic it's not even a romantic comedy it's, the for, is it? it's, it's a, a formula it's, it's like a, a romantic drama type thing where it, is like, a, it is you a need to get there by, so like... well yeah i guess yeah but um you you need to get to this point so you just draw a straight line to the point <laughs> and you don't worry about everything else around it yeah god damn it's because I will say with the rom com because I've I've studied the format of this like uh, at uni and yeah this this is paint by numbers exactly beat for beat a like all of the classic tropes of rom com that have been like just overused and just there's no like I said before there's no nuance there's absolutely no nuance yeah yeah I mean you, you you've got um all the classic characters like nerdy kid <laughs> uh sexy jock guy who well hang on the nerdy a kid the at the kissing booth actually kind of turns out to be a good kisser but then afterwards because they're in blindfolds she's like I'd never kiss that but she really fucking slobbered on him well actually he it looks like the worst kiss but she's enjoying it so yeah that's what I mean she's having a great fucking time yeah and then we've also got braces girl who has ridiculous braces like they're ju- no I'm one sorry, has those braces ridic- in 2018 yeah. they're too ridiculous like it's too over the top yeah, and then you've got the th- popular girls, the OMG girls. The OMGs. Um, so let's yeah, let's talk about the main point of this film, this kissing booth. So there's a fundraiser for the school, even though it's like a rich fucking school for rich kids. Why the fuck do you need a fundraiser? And true. they have this kissing booth, and uh, Elle and Lee are like, hey, um, hey, yo, hey, yo. Yeah, they're uh, running it. Noah, will you do the kissing booth? Even though all he does is make out with girls constantly in this film, he goes, no, kissing random girls, ew, I don't want to do that. It needs to be on my terms. <laughs> my terms, goddammit! Um, so they do the kissing booth, and Lee, like, steps up, and they're like, yo, that's not the flim we wanted to kiss, and all the girls rip up their tickets apart from one, who's this, actually this really, like, pretty, beautiful girl... And she steps up and kisses him, and he's got the blindfold on. And he, yeah. and by this point, he's never had a relationship or anything. And he takes the blindfold off, and he's like, "Oh, fuck yeah!" <laughs> and they just—it's so random, but yeah. yeah. But also, just they just—they instantly click, and they're like really cute for the rest of the film. Like they're a yeah, better yeah. couple than this Noah, and we care more about that relationship with the girl that we didn't realize what her name was until the final like ten minutes of the film when they said it. It's Rachel. Rachel! Rachel! Now, actually, he dresses up like Batman. Do you think he did it just so he could go, Rachel! So he gets with this girl, and then that becomes a relationship that, even though it's not in the foreground, we care about them way more, because they're both way better and consistent people that actually don't cause drama and are just happy together, and everything works. There's no fights, you know what I mean? And then, mm. finally, we get the moment where Elle ends up on the stand and, lol, they were, the OMG girls were going to get a kiss a nerd, but Noah cut in line, so they have that kiss and they fall in love and they have to hide their romance and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And just instantly, there's just problems. Like, they lie to each other. They are sneaking around. Nobody approves of them being together. Like, everybody knows that Noah's this, like, play, this, like, player... And she's just this... I say she's innocent. She's always... She's in fucking purposefully going in boys' lockers rooms. I mean, she didn't purposefully go in there, but once she was in there, she started doing a strip show just yeah, to prove she, a point. She, yeah. They're like the most toxic people that could end up together. They are not good for each other. But then they're not painted in that... Like, 
Like, oh, you're not you, meant you, to think that. Yeah, no. exactly. Yeah, it's so dumb. It's supposed to be like a Romeo and Juliet that were like, "Oh, I wish they could just be together." It's like um, Elle is just completely infallible because yeah. she, because she's the main character, guys. Don't forget, she she has main character like armor. Yeah, exactly. She's but... she's only allowed to do wrong at the end of the second act when everything's supposed to be sad. Everything else yeah. we're supposed to see is good, even though it's fucking shit. Yeah. God so like it. there's also this gay couple in the film that i'm i'm not joking you i'm not joking sorry i should say when not i kidding you I'm, I'm i wouldn't lie to you like how many scenes do they have two scenes yeah man so oh, there's a gay guy in the kissing booth line which we know he's gay because he's wearing one of those like sweater like a sweater around his neck like a scarf which in america especially in la is like for some reason just the stereotypical gay look in cinema it's yeah. very again it's it this you, film is very problematic <laughs> you, well yeah you've you've got your stereotypes just painted Honestly. blandly well, like there's outright. like the per the person who's the head of the student council is british because she's the only british person in the school so of course because she's british she's super polite says wanker like that uh, uh, and of course is head of the is head of the board because she's british so that means she would be the head of a student board like a yep. nerd like yep. so anyway this gay couple this gay guy's in line get, at the kissing get booth. To it. i'll get to the point i'll get to that fucking point this gay couple this gay guy's in the line and this jock guy goes past you know pretty good pretty good looking guy. A, joe would you say he's a pretty good looking guy uh yes he's a pretty he's a pretty good looking guy you know what maybe I mean? and i, I thought it was gonna now, but... <laughs> i thought it was gonna be like a homophobic scene like, he was going to look at him like, lol, you want to kiss a guy, you gay? But he actually, like, kind of smiles at him. <laughs> yeah. You know when you just realise that you just said something? Uh, do you just do you just pause it, or...? No, 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 I haven't paused it. Uh, okay, that's fine. No, it's <laughs> fine, it's fine. That That's staying in, like... <laughs> I'm not... That's not my opinion, I'm saying that's what the film was coming across as. Like, that's what I thought it was going to be. Anyway. <laughs> um, and oh, then at the... Confused. And they kind of so they, they he smiles at him and it's like oh okay he's oh okay that's you know he's into him and then at the end of the film at the prom they're like dancing back to back and then they suddenly bump into each other and they're like oh and they start dancing and those are the only two things they have and yet I'm more invested and happy for them getting together <laughs> than the two main characters in this film yes people the, with two scenes yes the sociopaths I don't know if got... that's the proper use of sociopath but I'm I'm just throwing it out though they're both just fucking crazy <clears> and they just yeah they're both you know, they're both enablers of each other's worst instincts and worst traits as yeah, people yeah. You, you know after the kissing booth where they kiss for the first time how, why do they fall out so because at first he's like yeah it's only a kiss right and she's like uh, sure yes and um they kind of like oh okay but then remember she's running back from the thing in her jean shorts and her dress top oh no i was thinking i was on about um in the rain no yeah this is where it leads to oh right okay so remember she's because remember earlier in the film she runs but she's in sportswear but this time she's running back it's it's like it's like maybe midnight like you know peak peak crime time in america <laughs> and this 17 year old girl is running by herself in the dark in the middle of the road mm-hmm wearing like short like tight clothes like bro that's that's are you insane it's america like jesus and then uh, noah comes by on his motorbike and he's like ah oh, you need a do you need a lift hey man that was a great last jedi reference i'll give myself that <laughs> nice you remember dj oh yeah that loser <laughs> he's got he's got a stutter <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing personal. It's all just <laughs> <laughs> this film is sh- 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 shit. Yes. So then they, it's raining, and they're driving yeah. on the bike, and they go to <clears throat> the glass little dome thing. Gazebo, from... perhaps. Perhaps you could call it. Some yeah, could call it. Th- that. Yeah, this is yeah, this is what I was thinking about. Yeah, they go to that thing from the Sound of Music. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and then they have this kind of like he has like a heart to heart almost with, um, with L, and yeah, uh, I like, said this during the film. You're the, the only person that sees me as I really am. Yeah, yeah, he, he hasn't felt this connection with anyone else before, and <laughs> he likes that she's 
honest with him and she doesn't fall at his feet like all she these other girls. She calls him out for on his shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, and yeah, <laughs> I said this during the film and it's like, mm-hmm. it's almost as if, um, you know, knowing someone for all of, basically all of your life, you know, for a long time, forms yeah, yeah. some kind of deeper connection than just, you know... Um, kissing random girls. Kissing random girls. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I feel like that's not that shouldn't be that surprising, but apparently yeah, it's, to it's... young Noah, it is, <laughs> and to her as well. Yeah, like whoa, what what is this feeling? Wow, if you How if you actually come? if you make a connection with someone on an emotional and kind of um, you know non sexual like a you know a non sexual connection like if you actually click yeah. with someone on multiple levels yeah. and Best then you become a them. couple yeah. yeah if you actually get to know someone and then you become a couple it's almost as if it works out better than just Whoa. one night stands oh my god thank you kissing booth for teaching me how to date yeah man god damn it Ugh, fucking so hate man. this film oh yeah i forgot i forgot to say um l she doesn't look like she slept a day in her life. <laughs> I'm sorry, but get some sleep, love. And your, that, yeah. your dark, dark circles are, are very bad. Bruv, my, my dark circles under my eyes are fucking awful, and I am I own up to that. You know, I tell people, I'm like, hey, man, I haven't been beaten up. I just don't sleep. But mm. she, even me, who looks like this, when you pointed out, I went, oh, fuck, she needs sleep. <laughs> That's, or at least get this... I got a, I, literally today I got a, listen to this, in, it's like a little roller for under your eyes, it's got like vitamin C and other things in it to try and, oh, you know what I mean? That sounds like bullshit. It probably is, but to be honest, seeing as my sleeping patterns aren't going to get better anytime soon, I thought I'd fucking try anything yeah, that might work. You need, you need all you can get. Well, so far I've just been putting banana slices under there and it hasn't been doing shit. Ah. Try the cucumber technique. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, there's one more of these films to go. Yes. And I didn't realise how much sequel bait there was at the end of this piece of shit. Yeah, I, I kind of wonder what's going to happen. Like, yeah, because... How are they going to do it? Well, it's going to be High School Musical 3. Oh. Have you seen no High cool School songs. Musical 3? Bro, yeah. right. I'm probably going to out myself and people listening... Bro, probably... I don't care. Right. All right. It's time like... for... Okay. It's time. It's time for honesty, Joe. Yeah. Joe? I'm on with you. Okay. We're so... We're... We stand strong. Thank you. I Thank you for standing with me on this. Like a best yes. friendship. Rule number one. My... <laughs> one of my best friends will stand with me when I say High School Musical 3 is not a bad movie. It's not a great or good film. I just like the high school musical movies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not... I don't like one or two. One or two pissed me off. But three, I watched it's, it... It's nostalgia for me, man. I, it is funny on a meme and nostalgia level. But three, honestly, three is really well made. At this point, um, Zac Efron's like good at acting and so are most of the other people. The script is actually pretty well written, which is weird. It's edited competently. Like, there's a... Have you seen the dance sequence on like, when they're on the roof before they're moving away to, like, college? And they just... The song's like, can I have this dance or whatever? And it's like their last dance together. Yeah, yeah. Bro, it's so... I, I'm, I can't oh, believe I'm saying this. It's quite Bro, it, sad. It's fucking beautiful, like, it's so yeah. well shot, and, like, for a minute you're like, <laughs> bro, you're like, I'm watching a high school musical and I'm, like, feeling things? What the fuck? <laughs> this is mad. Yeah. But, like, so I'm I'm assuming that's what this next one's gonna do, because at the end of this, no, when everything's, you know, when we get to this typical, well, we're at the end of the second act going into the third, so everything has to be sad and bad so that the end feels good. Yes, because um, he's moving away to an Ivy League college. Yes, he's going to Harvard, which is uh, America's Oxford. Yeah. Yes, or Cambridge, whichever one. They're both the same, let's be honest. They're both just as good as each other and both for fucking nerdy nonces. And posh boys. He's, do you say I'm fuck boys? Posh boys. I was going to say fuck boys go to yeah, all the other unis. <laughs> so he's, yes, because if, you know, even when things are supposed to be bad in this guy's life and you're supposed to try and feel for the fact that all of this whole, this basically this family have fallen apart, 
He still gets to go into the top college in the goddamn country, in the continent. Yeah, and she says um, she, at the end she can finally like think clearly or something, like everything's good or whatever. I don't yeah, know even that. when it ends bad, they're still like I say, she still gets a fucking motorbike. Even and... though long distance. Bro, bro long work. distance. Is so he's moving away to Harvard and she's obviously staying because she's a year younger. Bro, and we were talking about this. Long distance, it just... I've experienced it firsthand. It does not work. It is so... It seems so hard to just break up with someone before you have to, like, you know, move away and do shit. Bro, it is nowhere near the agonizing pain of awkward fucking phone calls that never end and you're both in silence. And I'm just like, if this next film does that... I mean, it'll be accurate and I'll be surprised, but it'll still piss me off a little bit that I'm like, bro, why would you write a script that does this? There is, as I said, there's one show, there's one piece of media from what I've seen out of all the things I've seen that have gotten long distance right and have said everything that needs to be said. And it's How I Met Your Mother. He has a long distance relationship. He's on the phone and they're just talking about bullshit, but with so many gaps in between because you don't know what to do and you can't hang up, but you want to hang up, but you can't. And you're both like, oh, this sucks. No more needs to be said. I don't need to see it again because it will never be as funny or well done as that. So Kissing Booth 2, obviously, you know, it'll be seamless for you guys, but it's going to be an entire day's worth apart from me and Joe. My one hope is that this long distance thing is just, it's too much to ask to it to be told in a good way. It's too much to ask. You got anything else to say? I'm just, I'm kind of sad nah, now. I think I we think should leave it there. All the anger has left me and I'm just really sad. I'm just depleted. Yeah. This film really took it out on me. I don't, we haven't even said everything we need to say, but fucking hell, we've been speaking yeah. for like 40 minutes. Yeah, I think for, for the part one, it's uh, getting a bit long. But Yeah, but I mean, fuck. Don't, don't, don't support this film. Don't watch this film. Don't watch the second <laughs> one. I'm, I'm fucking serious. Like, this is... Don't tell Hollywood that you don't... I mean, it's not going to work because everybody watches this garbage, but... Don't expect better out of your fucking film industry. Expect better of your writers. Expect better of just a more modern and sophisticated mindset. Like, I know it's a dumb rom-com, but young girls and young guys watch this and they're going to be like, well, there's no consequence for slapping a girl on the ass. There's, oh, and if a guy slaps me on the ass, I guess I should just be okay with it if he apologizes afterwards and give him his num, give him my number and just, you know, like, oh, it's bad to stand up for girls and fight when somebody's trying to pull them to a hot tub that they don't want to get into with them. I've seen certain reasons why bad things happen in hot tubs when you don't want to be in there with someone. I'm sorry, but this film is sending really stupid and fucking downright awful messages, even if it doesn't mean to. Even if the writers are so dumb that they don't realise what they're implying with what they're saying. But my god, I'm just, I can't believe, you know there's going to be, uh, fuck it, I was going to say this till the end of two, but I'm so mad, I'm just going to say it. Joe, they're making a third. Yeah. And it's going to be out in 2021. <laughs> my, uh, my rating is dumb, out of ten. My rating is god awful, hot trash, piece of shit, send it to the gulag out of ten. Fuck this film. Right. My god, I'm glad we have a day off in between this because. <sighs> See you really in uh, three seconds, maybe? Are you going to say three seconds for this one? Yeah, three. You bloody, you bloody, yeah. you're a little rascal. You are giving me all this editing trick I need to do. Uh, you could just do it now seconds. instead. Oh, uh, I don't wait, have what? To. Oh, I could just go against you and make it 3.25. You could just go now. One eternity later. Oh my god, yeah, an entire yeah, yeah, day yeah, has yeah, passed. Yeah, yeah. An entire day has passed. And Joe, what is our attitude right now? Uh, I'm tired. I'm depressed. <laughs> I'm... I have no longer... I've lost the will to live, basically. <laughs> Bro, I'm, I'm kind of... I'm I'm kind of happy. I don't know why. I'm kind of Happy just, it's over. I'm very happy it's over. Like, I think it's just hit me. We've literally... Um, We've literally just, uh, the credits have just started rolling. We refuse to watch the blooper reel at the end because we refuse to get any joy out of this film. Um, but to be honest, oh my, it's over. I'm suddenly realising we never have to watch these films again. Apart from num when number three comes out. I because that no. was teased at the end. <laughs> <sighs> oh, so this film, um, better than the first? No. More watchable than the first? No. The characters are written better than the first? No, the same, which is equally shit. 
The same, but longer. <laughs> yeah, the same, which is shit, but longer. <laughs> so you, so you overall getting more shit. <laughs> that's yeah, that's that is certainly one way of looking at so it. So yeah. really, it is worse. It is worse. <laughs> okay, all right, I'll accept it. There's to be there's less sexism in this one. You know, there's a yeah, plus. There's yeah. there's a gay couple that like they because apparently the first gay couple. From the first film, apparently, uh, they just... I don't think either of those characters are back, but there's a new gay couple that get, like, three scenes together, and we care more about yep. them, but they actually get together at the end! Yes, <laughs> and, it's rather, and it's rather nice. It's oh, it's rather lovely! Nice. It's so lovely, I'm very happy for them. Every other couple in the film... Everyone's just fucking clapped. Everyone like, no is No one so makes sense clapped. at all. Nobody makes any um, fucking sense. I think yeah. my happiness is fading because I'm now remembering the th- <laughs> what we watched. Yo, uh, at least at least Lee and Ella, fellow podcasters, <laughs> <laughs> with their fifteen pound Amazon microphone. Oh god! So at the start of this film, they retcon the end of the last one, and they're just like, actually, before he left, we did me and uh, what's his face did a ton of cool shit. It was the um, summer, wasn't it? Summer. Before he. Yeah. No, because remember, at the end of that film... They, remember, last film, they were like, yeah, we spent every day oh, together, but yeah, they didn't say, oh. like, we did all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Lee got jacked or whatever, even though he's not really that jacked, but okay. Sh- so, should, we, should we just do, like, a tiny, uh, like, run of the story and then... Okay. And then just complain, because do I just might, want to complain. Yeah, do you mind if I take this one? I think I might be yeah, able to yeah, sum yeah, this yeah. up pretty fast. All right, all right, folks. <laughs> Fucking lightning round for this piece of shit. Here, yeah. here we go. Three, two, two one. one. Uh, what's his face? Uh, Noah's gone over to Harvard and he's having a hard time. And Elle is also having a hard time with them being apart. So she's trying to give it space because she doesn't want to come across as a clingy girlfriend. And Noah doesn't want to tell her about the problems at uh, uni that he's having because, oh, I don't want to seem like a pussy. Communication's the problem. Uh nice. Lee uh, is a buff guy and is uh, him and Rachel are still the best couple in the film at the start. Uh, yeah. But then Elle ends up uh, taking up too much of Lee's time and she's like, can you kind of tell your best friend to back off so that, you know, you don't leave me stood outside of movie theatres for 45 minutes because you forgot to show up me and we're instead doing Dance Dance Revolution Which he does her. not do, lol. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and he lies to her and says that he has told her to back off but then she hasn't which causes problems. Communication is the problem. Uh, there's this new guy that's come into town uh, who is doing the kissing booth. Um, oh yeah, there's a kissing booth in this one too. Uh, it doesn't really mm. matter. Um, and... Elle and him are kind of having a thing going on um, and she thinks that Noah's cheated on her with this British uh, black woman like this all round kind of awesome sexy girl at Harvard um, she finds an earring under his bed and thinks they've slept together doesn't tell him Uh-oh. communication's the problem it all comes to a head where she thinks he's cheated so she kisses this guy at a massive dance dance revolution event where they Which win we $50,000 so much about because it's dance dance mania it's dance dance mania baby uh, they kiss and it turns out this whole time that Noah hasn't actually been cheating on her that's actually just the best friend Ooh, but he never decided yeah. to tell her that and instead lied mm. to her communication's the problem uh, Lee finds out that she wants to go to Harvard instead of the college that they both want to go to, but she never told Ooh. him, even though he should be okay with it, because in the last film they said, hey, the rules don't matter. Ooh. Communication's the problem. Um, Rachel and Lee uh, have problems because it eventually finds she eventually finds out that he lied and never told Elle to back off. Communication's Ooh. the problem. Baby. They have Ooh. five minutes where they finally actually talk to each other. Somehow everything works out and we're supposed to believe, we're supposed to be happy that Noah and um Elle are now happy together that Rachel and Lee are now happy together and they're going to give it another go even though he lied straight to her face several times uh and also nope. Noah and um Elle are supposed to be fine even though she kissed another guy right in front of him I mean she didn't know he was there but still it was right mm. in front of him she yeah, was the one yeah, who actually yeah. ended up cheating and she's lied about the fact that she's been accepted into both colleges and were left at the thing of which college will she go to the one with her best friend or the one with her boyfriend so now there's drama for the third one mm. Woo! She's the main character. She, she gets away character. with everything. Yeah, she somehow manages to get into Harvard despite being a fucking retard. Yeah. Hmm. So. Yes. <laughs> Just take a deep breath. They somehow take, managed take to make breath. me uh, hate Lee. 
uh hate rachel <laughs> hate the fact that they're together uh hate well, noah i mean i already didn't like l but you know now i hate her a character that they made me to like that new guy mark and then he has Marker. one scene where suddenly he turns out to be a dick but then at the end they yeah, immediately yeah, yeah. change it straight away and just flip flop and you meant to feel bad for the guy but i kind of don't because he was a dick Mm. The... That, that that's one way this film is worse than the first one because it 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 flip flops even more mm. like the characters are so good but also so bad and They're evil the worst people at the, the same world. time and the, but remember the characters it... just serve the plot yeah oh yeah 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 whatever if there, there needs to be drama for this scene so instead of just having people explain to each other what's actually going on we're going to specifically turn the situation in every way that could make it possibly be filled with drama and be bad like a, literally a, a two minute conversation with everybody gathered around a table could solve every problem in this film and, yeah, people like, are, it, it, and actually people are kind of dicks that they don't just tell each other and then at the very end when they tell each other they're like the other characters are like oh i didn't realize oh you meant this it's like bro you're still a dick for waiting two hours into the film to actually say this stuff yeah 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 i hate marco this i hate this film do you remember that brief second when i was having fun what the the, the bit where you like the editing yeah bro they did this bit where the editing was so like refreshing and cool and different like what was the song in the background uh can you sing it for me uh i can't actually remember it why do you build me up you build me, me up, up out of the cup i just all left me down let me down i mess me around and then worst of all <coughs> worst oh, of on. all thank you <laughs> <laughs> and then the problem is that they never call baby baby <sighs> joe just rant for a bit um, i need to drown in my sorrows okay uh, i've got some problems um she used to take care as an opening line as a text message <laughs> um um the the principal or someone uh, clowned on l f for only having 37 subscribers <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and thirty-seven thousand. We can work with that. No, it's thirty-seven. <laughs> yeah, yikes! Un yikes! Mi you ain't Mrs. going to college, Mrs. bitch. Mrs. Unpopular. <laughs> God, check check out this nerd. Which which um you know joking aside, is it actually a very bad message to send to the Kitty Winkles? Because um, indeed it is. Social media uh, is it everything, guys? I mean, it's not as bad as basically saying that if somebody makes sexual advances towards you that you don't want, you should just forgive them and give them your number, but it's still pretty bad. Yeah. I mean, you did say a positive of, of this second one is that there's no sexism, but is that <laughs> yes. really a positive? <laughs> what, the, fa it, the fact that in the second one they finally went, maybe we shouldn't do the slapping ass bit Yeah, should, okay. shouldn't it be ex uh, expected? Like, just a given. <laughs> that it shouldn't be sexist. I shouldn't be commending it. You stopped being sexist. Well, well you know, done. Well, you can be sexist as long as it's good. Like, <laughs> not not good. No, sexism isn't good. But if it, like, actually means, you know, like, it's getting you across mean, the you message mean... that it's bad. But it was just done poorly yeah, you mean in the last you mean, you mean, like, sexism in a film can be good if it's trying to say something about the character or actually make a point that's what, yeah. is that what you're saying and, yes and and the sexist actions aren't completely disregarded in the next scene yes yes it isn't just accepted <laughs> and, yeah um hmm, hmm, hmm. uh one positive l looks like she has had some sleep <laughs> she's finally had some sleep or she's yes. or she's using that roller for my eye yeah true true you never know can i also just point out i saved your ass just then <laughs> When you just said sexism can be good, and no, I, was no, like, I was like, I need to, clear, I need to cover for this guy. No, yeah, I knew, you what, know, you I knew on, what you guys, meant. I knew what you meant. But just in come case on, some on. random person listens to this in Hong Kong and is like, what? Hmm. True. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Um, lack, lack of logic. Um, they, they have a, they have a sport day. Yeah. And this is where Marco is kind of introduced oh, yeah. a bit. Um, he's he's introduced. His personality's like, displayed. Yeah, you know, like this cocky, cocky dickhead. Bitch. But he's sexy, but so he's everyone flirting likes him. With <laughs> mm. Your shoelace is untied. And, what? Um, and then the, they go bang, start, and yeah. she's like, "You, you bloody bastard! Like, I thought my yeah, shoe was untied, you bloody you really, bastard! You really got to be there, <laughs> you bloody, you bloody bastard!" Yeah, and um, 
and Tuppen and uh, Marco win, win the tug of war by taking their t-shirts <laughs> off because because taking your t-shirts t- t- off means more power. <laughs> that t-shirt was holding us back. Yeah. Fuck t-shirts, man. <laughs> yeah, fuck t-shirts. Yeah, bro, when I take off my t-shirt, my six packs on this Yo, yo, oh, yeah. Yes, Dan, yes. Yep. Um, I was just going to say, I just got so caught up about thinking about these rules. These stupid oh, fucking rules. Oh, my God. So, man. let's say, you, if you... Uh, I know in the first half of this, we didn't really do a good job of explaining the film, but we were just so mad. We're a bit more calm and collected now, so... <laughs> no, no. Okay, it. okay. We're somewhat calm and collective. It it, co- it comes and goes. It's a bit like... Yeah, it's a bit like the, it's, it's, a, it's a bit like the bloody tide, you know what I mean? Sometimes it comes in, sometimes it goes out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just blah, blah. So... At the end of the first film, she has this big moment with Lee where she's like, look, these rules that we made when we were six probably shouldn't abide by them like 12 years later, you know what I mean? We probably shouldn't let it jeopardize our entire lives. And jeopardize. Our, yeah, and our like, you know, our relationships and how we interact with other human beings and just our general social life. And and Lee's like, yeah, you're right. We shouldn't let these rules, you know, whatever. And what are we immediately reintroduced to in this film? The rules. The fucking rules. And the, and that's somehow sacred again. Like, what? Yeah, yeah. You have to go to the same college as your best friend or we'll get mad. What? Yeah, like, basically, like, 75% of the conflict in this movie is brought up by those rules. You know what? I'd actually go as far to say 85% because do you remember Eight? at the end? Yo, you raised me 10%. I raised you 10%, big boy. Jesus. So... Uh, remember at the end when Noah's like, "Look, I just, I just wanted to have the, the the thing with this girl that you have with Lee and um, you know, best <laughs> friends and and we, you know, like with the rules and stuff, like you know, we were just and I'm like, wait, the rules cause his conflict as well, motherfucker. Goddamn rules. We should live in a society without laws or rules. Uh, I really it should be anarchy. This election was stolen from us because of the rules. If there were no rules, I would be president for life. Bro, bro. Rule number five. Always let Donald Trump be president. No, always do the Thanksgiving wishbone together <laughs> with your best friend. So, That's number five. Remember what number one was? Number one was always tell your bestie like your birthday wish, right? Yeah. Let's let's have a go right now. What do you think two two through four is? What do you think two through four is? Fucking hell. Always so, tell your first... friend when you've had a sizable shit. <laughs> Always send a picture. And include pictures. Yeah, a picture yes. of your sizable shit. That's two. What's three? Um, fuck. Um, you always have to have the same... Foreskin. Uh, <laughs> you always have to have the same um, bread on your sandwiches. <laughs> the same as, bread. As, as, your, as your best friend. If she's, feeling, if she's feeling nine grain wheat, then you're going to have to go for that shitty sandwich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and number four is if you're watching porn, you're allowed to say, oh, can I watch with you? But you both have to understand that it's a joke, even Wrong. though the film doesn't make it out to be a joke, and then you don't watch porn with them. Lul. Those That's are some something co- that happened did- in the first film. <laughs> yeah, which, oh, do you see how that was a callback? Because the only way I could make this joke instead of coming up with a new original idea was just calling back to the first. Hmm, I wonder Ooh. if this film does it every fucking five minutes. Yeah, it's to get everyone on board because like the first one was such a, you know, such a success. Everyone, well, like a lot, I a lot of people did like it, but I presume. Well, I mean, there's three. The fil- of... There's a third one coming out, so presumably it did well for Netflix. Fuck's sake. Yeah, we're con- contributing by watching it. Yeah, yeah, Joe. What happened when you went on Netflix today to set up the watch? Oh, yeah, it was right there. <laughs> It was right there. It was like, hey, you you like the first one so much. <laughs> Watch number two, please. Here's a big banner of it. Here's a big bloody banner. Uh, yeah, should we talk oh. about Marco a bit? Who? Marco. Tall uh, man. Guitar man. Tall man with small face. Yes. He can do a he can do a like Super Saiyan backflip that. Sends him about twelve feet into the air, like maybe, maybe like yeah. thirteen, fourteen feet into the air. He's he's kind of jacked. He's not jacked kind of no jacked, other. bro. Um, <laughs> you know, you know the set. The, the thing that happened in this film, you know, where she's watching a video of him working out, and she accidentally turns on the PDA system oh, so everyone fuck. can hear her talking throughout the school about how hot he is. You know, that actually happened in my school, but I was talking about you. <laughs> oh, 
I said, look what, at how his How did you abs. describe me? Oh, you I said, I'd like to have a bloody... You know how you bounce on a bouncy castle? I'd like to have a bloody bounce on those chibs. Look at his fucking... Look at his fucking rolls. I fucking... Oh, my mm. God. You know you know when you roll pastry? Look at it. It looks like when you fucking roll pastry. Pretty mm. fucking... Pretty good, mate. Yeah, I do have a tasty pair. <laughs> 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 anyway, Mark, we're talking about Marco, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, his initial spell MVP. <laughs> Marco <laughs> Valentin Peña. Most valued person in the universe. <laughs> and, and, and apparently, this, oh, apparently he can get a better score on Dance Dance Revolution as one person alone than two Damn. people who have been playing it for 12 years. Damn, it's Dance Dance Mania. Bro, I don't care. For legal reasons, of Get course, it. it's Dance Dance Mania. Get it bro, right. <laughs> it's Dance Dance Revolution, and you better believe I'm going to Dance Dance Revolution con that showed off in this film. Bro, Dance Dance Revolution is not canon in the Kissing Booth universe. <laughs> it's Dance do you think, Dance do you think Mania. There's, do you think there's an Elseworlds story where it is canon? Uh, you know, like, there's stories where, like, Superman lands in Russia, so he becomes, like, a big commie boy. Like, yeah, do, you think, yeah. do you think there's, there's Kissing a, Booth, there's a kissing there's kissing booth, booth multiverse? comics? It's like... <gasps> The Kissing Booth Cinematic Universe, the Yo. KBCU. <laughs> oh, baby. Get on it, Marvel. Buy the rights while you can and before it overtakes you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Dance Dance Mania. Yeah. Yeah. $50,000 uh, prize. $50,000 for being good at Dance Dance Mania. Mm. Well, $50,000 for stepping off the board a million times so you actually missed all the steps, but because you did a giant backflip, you win. But also, they got a 100% perfect, perfect step rate, perfect, even perfect, though perfect. in the fucking background you can see that they're missing steps. Oh, you oh, bastards. Really, really irks me. Did you really think that all these teenage girls that are watching this film that's giving them a bad influence and a bad outlook on life and a bad interpretations of relationships <laughs> and how they should act in relationships, did you really think they wouldn't notice? Bad interpretation of Dance Dance Mania. Revolution. Mania. Revolution. Fine, you win. Thank you. See, because it was Not. a revolution and revolution won. Oh, fuck. What year was the French Revolution? I don't know. I'm looking it up. It says 18... Eight, eight, seven, seven, wait. A year. 1789 Probably. to 1799. Yo. See how welcome. easy it is to get distracted when talking about this piece yeah. of shit. At any point, at any point, did Marco wear a leather jacket? No, he wore more... Because... Okay. Um, um, yeah, because remember that this film is a pla is a really big fan of stereotypical clothing based on your sexuality, your race, yeah, or yeah. like your age. So he wore like the typical like Latino clothes that, that white Hollywood people say. Well, this is what the Latino boys are wearing down on yeah. the Sydney Bay. Sydney Guitar Bay? slung across his back. Oh yeah, because like, of course, yeah, because of course, because yeah, because he's. I'm assuming he's Hispanic. I I don't want to assume, but I'm pretty sure he's. He's, he's Hispanic or Latino. Marco Valentin Peña. Yeah, so, and of course, because because he's Latino and living in America, of course that means that he knows how to play the guitar and is an amazing singer, of course it is. Because mm -hmm. stereotypes, guys, they don't do those. No, Hollywood's above that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, how are people not really insulted by these films? Like, I don't understand. I don't know. I wonder what the demographic is. 12 year olds probably probably people that shouldn't be watching it but i swear whenever this whenever number one came out at least 2018 mm -hmm. like so that's uh, that'd be six form wouldn't it um that's our second year six no first yeah i swear, I, swear year? I heard people like second year in yeah. in the same year and like oh, maybe one or two lower, like fucking raving about. Yeah, it. well, it's all t it's all manner of teenage girls. It goes from like thirteen all the way up to probably you know probably stupid people in their twenties that never moved on or learned how to grow up or analyze the world <laughs> any more up. than any more than just being a stupid idiot. And this goes for both genders, by the way, because there are guys that watch this shit. Mm. Definitely is stupid <laughs> fucking fuck boys. <laughs> Yeah, fuck it. I don't even know why I can judge we've watched this, but we did it for comedic purposes, okay, and to torture ourselves because we hate ourselves, really. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is, this film actually made me slap my face. <laughs> like, I genuinely just hit myself. There were so many moments where I leaned back and went, <laughs> like that, and clapped like this because I was so mad I had to exert energy. Yeah. <laughs> but you actually slapped yourself in the face. 
Yeah, I I, I face palmed aggressively. <laughs> that's one way to that's one way to look at it. What was that laugh? <laughs> <laughs> this film's making me retarded. Oh my god! No. Uh, so in summary, uh, Oscar contender. Hmm. Maybe. Do you think? They should make a new category in the Oscars that's the kissing booth category, so they have to keep making kissing booth films every year, otherwise oh, yeah. they, otherwise they read out the card and be like, it's blank! It's blank! And that's when the world goes into... Uh, chaos. Goes into chaos. Yeah. Chaos. Pure chaos. <laughs> um, Yo, there's no poo. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually a funny line in the film. He's like saying about to um Rachel, he's like, Yo, if you if you love me, send me a send me a smiley face emoji, if not send me a poo emoji, and then he looks at his phone, he's like, There's no poo! There's no poo Poo funny. Poo is very funny. You know what, you know what? Let's make this a weekly thing, Joe. Poopy, poopy stinky to you. Poopy poopy stinky to you too. Mmm yum 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 yum. I yum. take it back. <gasps> I take it back, Joe. man. Jokes, jokes, jokes. Did you? No, 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 no! Don't joke around about this shit. This is serious. Yo, I'm this is a you know. serious thing. If this relationship is gonna last, we have to say poopy stinky every single week on the podcast. Yeah, but I was, <laughs> I was just, I was just joking. Did you like, mean it when you said I'm... poopy stinky to me, or did you mean it when you said poopy stinky to that other skank you've been hanging out with? Oh, no, I never said poopy stinky. That's to right. That skank. I We're found, I found her poo emojis underneath <laughs> your bed. Ah, <laughs> uh. oh, yes, yeah. Um, bro, rule number, t- rule number two. I had a massive shit earlier. Do you want to see the pictures? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh, I'm clocked out. Yeah, I'm clocked out. So, um, yeah, uh, ratings, what do you think? Let's put them both together. So it's out of 20. Uh, or, um... You are allowed to go into the minuses. <laughs> I just... Oh, this shit, bro. I'm going to say minus 0. 0.69. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know, 69 funny word. Oh. <laughs> Call back! Funny word. Yeah, I remember you said funny word even though it's a number, but we let it fly because it was a pretty good joke. When did I say that? Uh, the Marvel episode. Oh, when, okay. we were, when we were saying about Noob Master 69. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. Sure. If you, hey, hey, if you're watching this on um, YouTube, you, you, can, you can go over to the uh, Arguing About Marvel movie on my channel right now and you can see the clip for yourself. Give it a like. Give it a like. Give it a like. Please, dear Ooh. God, dear God, ah. give it a like. Yeah. Yeah. We'll give it a dislike yeah. if you want yeah. Joe to strangle yeah. you. Yeah, jump through your window and choke you. I think that's what it Jumping was. Jumping through your window, snatching your people um, up. You know, I'll give it a... I'll give it a fucking... Two out of... One out of ten. Mm, you almost thought about giving it that extra one, didn't you? Yeah. But it doesn't deserve that. Yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't do it, could you? You couldn't, you, like... You know when... You know when you like actually zero like I just don't want to watch <laughs> yeah why'd you again. give it a one I just I don't like there's no measure of positivity there isn't I, like like I really just hate these type of films yeah and they're you know, so bad but guess what what we're gonna watch Love Actually around by Christmas but you trust me you're actually you, you gonna, say that's good yeah you're actually gonna love it it's a it's a great rom com and it's very funny See, it's if it's good British. I don't mind I'm not, I don't mind getting a bit gooey man. A bit gooey. <laughs> I don't get my mind getting a bit like, oh, oh, but if it's shit, it's fucking shit, and I'm gonna fucking take the mick out of it. You fucking of, get me. Speaking of goo, <laughs> can I can I just take a minute to promote Splat a lot? What? Remember Splat a lot? Oh, the T. Uh, yeah, the, the TV yeah, show yeah. where they have the guys and they're shooting like it's like Total Wipeout, but there's it's like a kids game show and they they go on and they they do all the like events and there's those character there's like night characters that shoot them with goo and stuff and are all childish. Shout out. An episode of that is better than both of these films combined, and it'll take less time to watch. Mm. Head on over to BBC iPlayer and go into the CBBC section. <laughs> You've definitely went into the CBB- CBB section. <laughs> yeah, I watched, I watched reruns of Basil Brush. <laughs> 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 boom, boom. Uh, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Ba- boom, boom, uh. Bill. 
Please, have you watched oh. an episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine? No. God Yes, damn. yes Where I have. Where is Chris but I don't... when I need no, him? I have, but I don't remember these things like you two psychopaths. We're not psychopaths for just remembering episodes of a show that we love. Sorry, man. You're actually clapped for not remembering anything from a show that you like, but don't love. <laughs> Bro, you've both watched the, all the episodes like three, two or three times. I've, I've re-watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine from start to finish seven times. Yes, nice Seven job. Seven times. How many and hours I, is that? And I st- that's over three years, so I started watching it in 2017, so... Oh, God. And bearing in mind, at first, that when I first started watching it, there was only five seasons out, and by this point there's uh, eight, seven or eight, so... When I say I've rewatched, it, it'll be the first five seasons seven times, the sixth season, like, maybe, uh, like, four, yeah. And then the newest one I've only seen once, so... I'm a psychopath. Yep. <laughs> you know uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm kind of sad now. I'm going to go get myself mentally checked out. Yeah. Just like fine. this film mentally checked me out. Krusty <laughs> 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 the Crab was the best. That's <laughs> what Krusty the Crab... <laughs> Chris, yeah, Christy Christy the, clown, the Clown, man. That's what you meant. <laughs> Do they spell the clown with a K? Because that's problematic. Probably. Because then he'd be the KK. <laughs> I don't know what... Imagine if he was called to. Crazy Krusty the Clown. <laughs> then you got some real problems. I don't know what you were alluding to. I don't know either. Ooh, spooky. Oh, God. That No, no, I wasn't making a joke about the... Because they put sheets over that. Jesus oh, Christ. Oh, ghost um, So I, I've, I've been Dan. Oh, I'm the... Uh, yeah, man. What? What's your name? Ben. <gasps> My long lost brother. Ah, uh, Michael. My- I've been Michael, and you've uh, been thanks, listening Ma- to. You've been Michael. I've been Simon. Nice. Thank you. I'm really. Is is this bit going anywhere? No. Oh. Uh, much like this podcast. Bye, guys. Bye. We have no <laughs> viewers. Bye, bye. Well, actually, we're doing pretty well. Thank you, guys. All the people that watched last week's episode, we really appreciate it. It's one of the most watched oh, yeah. episodes since the very first episode. That's really cool. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna do a quick thing now. Where I'm gonna quickly check how many views it's on because everybody who's uh, watched that episode, you're absolute fucking legends. Because we, um, you know, we're a small channel, and you just kind of, you just kind of helped us out. I'm, I'm stalling while I try and find my channel, my channel, my channel. Okay, it's still on the same amount of views. That's good. Thanks, guys, for giving us uh, 31 views on the last one. That's really fucking cool because it's been going down in views every week. And that's actually the most watched episode here on YouTube. That's really cool. Thanks, guys. Nice. Thanks, guys. That's really cool. You get, you guys get a pat on the head. You guys get a pat on the head and a gold star that's slightly bronze. Mm. And also never fully sticks to your school jumper. Yeah, we've actually we would advise that you actually like get some prit stick and like just just prit stick that bitch up a bit. Um, and I know your school's low on prit sticks because <laughs> what bloody school ever has the bloody prit sticks? There always, yeah. always only seems to be one to go fucking yeah, that's, around. That's relatable. That, that is, is relatable. relatable. Once in my uh, once in my uh, school, uh, we ran out of prit sticks because one kid was eating them all. Ha <laughs> ha! Bye guys. Bye. That kid's name was Joe. Bye.